welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new, welcome. So today we are going to be doing a tour of our new horse barn that you guys have been watching us build for the past couple weeks. So let's just go ahead and get right into it. But if you guys are excited to see this barn tour, make sure you go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel down below. Make sure you turn on those post notifications so you don't miss any of these videos. And of course, have a chance to get my post notification shout out. All right, you guys, let's get into touring this barn. So starting from the outside of the barn, this is our structure. It's a metal building. It is 36 feet wide. So going from this side to this side, and it is 48 feet long. So front to back, 48 feet long. So that means that our barn is a little over 1,700 square feet under the structure. So on the outside of the barn, this whole barn is actually hurricane proof. So up to 185 miles per hour winds. We need this here in Florida because we do get hurricanes. So the siding is all B-lap siding, which if you care what that means, you can look it up. I don't know all exactly about it, but that's just what it is. <laughs> So then we have on this side, we have this door and it's just a standard door and it's a man door is what they call it. And this goes into our 12 by 12 pre-structured tack room that was also built by the barn company. A lot of you guys ask me where we got the barn. We did get the barn from a company called Choice Metal Buildings. It's a Carolina carport, if you guys are familiar with that. Um, I'm not sure if you can get them all around the US even, but I do know that you can get them in obviously North Carolina, Florida, and I would think maybe Georgia. I don't know where else, but a lot of you guys ask me where we got this building. There's tons of other places that you guys can get metal buildings. This is just where we got ours. Our building is actually built off of an A-frame and two lean-tos. So as you guys can see, the difference in structures. So typical right here is our A-frame. The barn actually has 14 foot tall gables and then I believe it gets to the highest point is like 16 foot tall, I think. Don't quote me on that. And then our big, I'm gonna call it garage door. This is the front main garage door. This is a 10 by 10 area right here with a pull down door. So you can pull it down and it actually goes all the way down behind our gate. So as you can see, we have this same door also in the back of our barn. So we can fully enclose this barn for a hurricane. And then also, I do believe we're going to end up putting a window right over there that's also going to be hurricane proof. But we want to keep the whole barn hurricane proof. All right, you guys, so lastly, before we go into the barn, we have this concrete slab that we have out here. And we just did this at an angle over here just for aesthetic purposes. <laughs> but it comes out about seven or eight feet past the barn and goes at an angle because our barn is lifted two foot off of the ground, let's just say, because we had to make the pad two foot taller than our normal elevation, if that makes sense. And then over here, our concrete stocks, but we will eventually put some type of pavers or maybe concrete or something like that to go here for an outside wash rack or just a tie up spot, but that will be there. But let's go ahead and get into the barn. And this is just a 10 foot gate that we put on to add to the barn for when the big door is up. The big door will mostly always be up, but we still want these gates. And now we can go inside the barn. All right, so now that we're in the barn, we're gonna start, let's just start here with the tack room. So like I said, this is a pre-built with the barn, 12 by 12 tack room. So we were initially gonna build this ourselves, but since the barn company offered this, we went ahead and did this. I'm really glad that we did this like this just because it's fully enclosed, matches the barn. And then we have another man door, but we're not gonna go in the tack room because that's gonna be a full tack room tour because we are not yet finished with the tack room, waiting on a couple things to get here and then we will do a full in-depth tack room tour. But just know that behind this door and behind the front man door that you guys saw is our 12 by 12 tack room. Now this is our light switch. This is what controls the barn's lighting and fans. So we have two switches for the fans, one for the left side, one for the right side, and then the lights in the barn. So I'll go ahead and turn them off. It's gonna get really dark, lights off, switch lights on and these are the lights in the barn now how our fans work like i said the same thing one side and the other side so it'll get a little bit louder in here this is how our fans work but we will get into all that we're just going to go ahead and turn those off for sound all right so now we're going on this side of the barn this is all still concreted we have our whole alleyway concreted 
So this is 12 foot by 48 foot, all concreted down the center alleyway. And then we have this 12 by 12 area right here that's also concreted. We're using this for hay storage. This is also just gonna be for other storage when the hay runs out and such. So this is where our hay primarily stays. Obviously, there's a bunch of hay behind me. So this is where the hay stays and anything that we have. We have our cleaning stuff right here, which will eventually get moved, but that's there for now. Jumping over here because we do have full plumbing throughout the barn is our main water line shut off. So all we have to do is turn this on or turn this off to completely disable the water in our barn. I really like this feature because we can turn off all the water to the barn and not have to worry about our horses breaking a pipe or something like that and there being a huge flood. So I'm very grateful we have that. Then we have these rubber mats. These are four by six foot mats on the ground here all the way down the alleyway. And then right before we get to the first stall, we have our cross ties, which go from here on this first stall over to this little space right here, which is our little storage area. This is where we will store stuff in our barn. It has one of these doors. Our doors are about 45 inches by 45 inches, just depending on the little width in between here. Some of them are a little bit different, but we'll go with that measurement. All of our latches in the barn are the same. They look just like this. So easy latches where the little latch bar right here can move. So then you go into a little storage area. This is just a four by 12 little area that's concreted and has our storage stuff in here. And then as you guys can see our window unit that is for the tack room. Yes, we have an air conditioned tack room. I'll talk more about this when we do the tack room tour, but I wanted my tack room to be air conditioned and fully enclosed so that the feet and tack don't get mildewy and stuff like that because in Florida, we do struggle with that because we are such a humid place. All right, so moving to this stall right here, all of our stalls are 12 by 12. So yes, from here to here, they are exactly 12 foot on center and then front to back, 12 foot. So inside the stall, again, same type of door, three hinges. All of the wood in the barn is Southern yellow pine and most of the wood that we used are two by eights by 12s. So going into the stall, on all of our sides, we have these partitions, even though they might look like metal. They're actually CPVC bars, so the CPVC makes them flexible enough to where if a horse did get their foot caught in there or something like that, they would basically just bend out and not necessarily shatter, like normal PVC. So we have all of these bars that are just painted satin black. So I love the use of these bars for a couple reasons. They're super affordable and also they're super safe if they were metal and the horse got stuck in them. They can have some real issues if they were tugging on their hoof and just a disaster could happen with that. I like these because they are bendable but they're still also sturdy where they're not gonna just bust them out. None of my horses have busted out any of them yet. So I am really happy with this. So all along the back wall here is just wood all the way up. It will eventually do Dutch doors or windows of some sort. We have our water system right here. We have full plumbing in our barn with water spigots all in the barn and a hose. This is just the water system that we use to fill up our buckets and then we just hang the hose here. So as you can see, we have full plumbing running all throughout the barn. And then also on our sides, we have these metal U channels that also serve the purpose of being chew stoppers. So if your horse cribs or things like that or just chews on it, we have all the metal right here so they aren't going to deteriorate the wood. All of our stalls have a little mineral block holder and a mineral block in them or a salt block. Right now this is a mineral salt block. All of our stalls have this and then we also have our feet, which is grain buckets, all up in the front of our stalls like this. And then my favorite part of the stalls are actually the flooring. These are stall mattresses. They're actually thorough bed stall mattresses from Ram Horse Fencing and Stalls. I absolutely love that we did this mattress system. There's no grooves or any mats being put together where shaving stuff can get underneath them. It's been a breeze, literally, keeping these stalls super clean. We use way less bedding. So this is just how I have my bedding in my stalls right now. My horses haven't been stalled for a really long time, so I'm trying to get them just to understand to just use the restroom on their shavings. It's going really well. Eventually when they get that down pack, we'll put more shavings all throughout, but I personally don't like my horse's hay getting in with their shavings, and I just like them to have this area right here a little bit cleaner so that they can eat their hay. Because right now we don't have hay nets, but we eventually will, but this is where I am feeding their hay for now. We're doing an empty barn tour, but then we'll bring the horses in and do a horses in their stalls tour really quickly. 
All of our stalls have these fans. They put out a 6,000 CFM, so that's their airflow. They're extremely powerful. They put out a really great amount of air and they were super affordable. So I like those. We have those in all the stalls facing directly where the horses will eat their hay. Outside of all my stalls, I have right here, which is just a halter or a lead rope holder on all the stalls, just in case of emergencies or anything like that, I can just grab a lead rope or a halter and throw it on them. And then I just have this little fly spray holder right here. We just have one of these. This is just so I don't have to go into the tap room every time because I love to fly spray my horses because we do live in Florida where there's a lot of flies and mosquitoes. So I just have that one there. My barn has five complete 12 by 12 stalls. So as you can see, there's three on this side. All of them are set up the exact same, all the same flooring system, all the same water system. Everything is exactly the same. So this is the second stall. And then going to the third stall over here. This stall never gets used because I only have four horses. So it hasn't gotten used at all yet. But with our design, we just have these arches above where our horses walk through. I did this design like this and with the door in the middle because we do have these really big metal beams that were prefabricated with the barn. So I just wanted the door in the middle rather than them having like a big cross thing between them here. So if we just go into this stall really quick, you guys can get a better look of what a unused stall looks like in my barn. So we come in here, and as you can see, it's a really nice transition into the stall. Nothing that they can really trip on. So of course, in this stall is a little bit different. We don't have the partition bars on this side because this is the back of the metal building. But same system with water and the salt block and the salt block holder, our little grain bucket holder right here, and then this is a completely unused flooring. As you guys can see, a horse has never stepped on this before. And it almost looks pretty much as similar as the stall that has been used plenty of times. So they've been holding up really well. I love that we did these. So coming out of the stall, going to the other side of the barn again. So moving to this side, same thing, but we have two stalls on this side. They're kind of directly in the middle of the barn because we have our little storage area right here and then a 12 by 12 stall and another 12 by 12 stall. All of our stalls have the archway like I pointed out and all of them have the partitions separating them. So we just have two stalls on here. This makes a completed five stalls. And then over here in this little area right here, this is an eight by 12 space right here that is going to get concreted and will turn into our wash rack. Obviously, it's not like that at all right now. It's our little storage area. All of our extra wood and everything like that is in here. But in the next coming weeks, we will be making a fully functional wash rack with a drain and it will run from our plumbing out. So we will have an overhead shower system type of thing. So this will be my wash rack right here. My barn has a fully functioning electricity in it. So there's outlets in every stall. So up here, that's where the fans are connected to and then there's more outlets if we need to connect anything into them. Most of them are all fours. And then there's just a couple that hold just two outlets. So every stall has power. So that's pretty much the inside makeup of the barn. The barn isn't insulated. I live in Florida. It's not going to ever get too cold. We're in about our coldest time right now and it feels really comfortable in the barn. Of course, it's a little cold for me, but for our horses, they're not gonna feel it cold at all. So this is what it looks like looking at the barn from the back of the barn. Now moving to the back of the barn, again, we have another 10 by 10. And this is what the door looks like from the inside. I'm not gonna put it all the way down because we get to go out again. But this is basically what it looks like. And then we have our final 10 by 10 gate that just sits in the back here. Same thing as the front, it's just all the way through the back. You can drive all the way through it. This alleyway is very big so that we can fit vehicles through here, our tractors, anything like that can come through here. The horses can do a full turnaround in the alleyway, which was really crucial for me. I wanted them to be able to turn around and not hit any of the stalls or anything like that or get flustered in the barn. 
So that's pretty much the barn without any animals in it. So let's go ahead and bring the horses in and I'll show you guys what the barn looks like with the horses in. This is what the barn looks like with the gates closed. So we close this front gate to let the horses in and then we let the horses in through this back gate. So we're just gonna go around and open all the doors and then you guys can see what the barn looks like with all the doors wide open for the horses. Some horses. So this is what the barn looks like with horses in it. So they are eating their grain and hay. So they eat grain here, hay is over there, and this is what it looks like. We just built so this is what it is and I'm so happy about it if you guys like today's video and like seeing a complete tour of our horse barn make sure you go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to my channel down below make sure you turn on those post notifications so you don't miss any of these videos and of course have a chance for my post notification shout out today shout out goes to all right you guys I love you and I'll see you in the next one